Hey everyone, so I just switched up my everyday makeup drawer for spring. So I thought I would show you all of the products I'll be using for the next month or two, spring and then spring heading into summer. So during February and March, I was really into a lot of very pink and red themed products. I was kind of feeling like the typical Valentine's Day colors. Right now I'm really loving warm pinks and corals and peaches. So that's where I'm kind of headed with my cheek products, my eyeshadows, and then some lip products as well. So I shopped my stash for a lot of older favorites, and then I incorporated a couple of new products as well. I'll put timestamps in the description box in case you want to jump ahead to a certain category. I normally start with complexion, so I'm going to switch it up and start with cheek products today. Okay, so the first thing in here is from Natasha Denona. This is the Bloom Blush and Glow Palette. I picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale, and I'm so excited to have it in my life again. I did own it at one point and I really enjoyed using it during the spring and typically during the summer as well just because you have everything that you need in here. So you get two cream cheek products. You get this one and then this one. This one is a little bit darker than I normally wear but I think it's fun. It's kind of out of my comfort zone and then you get a highlighter and then a really glowy blush. You could probably use this as a highlighter as well depending on your preferences. I am so excited to have this again. I've used it a couple of times and I just miss using it. I like Natasha Denona's cream formula because it's not overly creamy to the point where it just kind of slips around or it melts off my oily skin. It stays in place pretty well. It's a little bit more subtle, so I have been enjoying this and I'm excited to keep using it. Okay, I do have a couple of other cream products in here as well, including this blush from LYS Beauty. This one is in the shade Kindness. I just picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale and I actually haven't had the chance to test it out yet. What throws me off about the LYS products is they're all packaged very similarly. So I always assume when I see one of them that it's like my bronzer or my powder or my highlight. And I thought this was my powder the entire time. Although this cream blush, the packaging is a little bit different than the powder. This packaging is a little bit more reflective and this one is not quite as reflective, but I didn't realize that as this was sitting in my drawer. So now I am definitely going to test this out because I was so excited about this formula. Actually, I'll probably use it today when I do my makeup, but it's just a really beautiful color. I've heard nothing but good things about this formula, so I can't wait to use it during the month of May. I also have my e.l.f. Putty blushes and my e.l.f. Putty bronzers. So I have the putty bronzer in the shade Tan Lines. A lot of you guys ask me if I recommend this if you're looking for a super long lasting bronzer. And I wouldn't say this is the most ideal option for that. I like to use this on like an everyday basis when I want more of a subtle bronze, something just a little bit softer. I wouldn't say it lasts on my skin all day long. It's a very lightweight formula. So I think it blends out really easily and it looks more natural. But if you're looking for a super long lasting formula, the Makeup by Mario Cream Bronzer is my go-to when I don't want it to move. I have a few other cream bronzers, which I'll get to in a second, but let me just show you the other putty blushes. So this one is in the shade Tahiti. This one is in the color Bahamas. It's a little bit unique to my collection because I don't have a, a lot of blushes that are this tone, but it's been a color that I've been drawn to lately. And then this one is called Turks and Caicos which is somewhat similar, just a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter. So I'll definitely be using these quite a bit. Now as for bronzer, I did include two other cream bronzers. So I have the Persona Cosmetics bronzer. I have the shade Dune. Again, this is a really nice formula for everyday wear because it's very smooth, really creamy, and just very easy to work with. It blends out in seconds. This one definitely has more pigment than the e.l.f. bronzer. So it is more ideal if you want it to look a little bit more prominent on the skin. And then I just got this one not too long ago. This one's from Rare Beauty and I have the shade Happy Soul. This one's a little bit newer to my collection, but again, I do like it. I prefer to apply this one directly to the brush and then go in and apply it to my skin. Whereas I feel like I can go either way with Persona Cosmetics, but I find that this one blends a little bit better if it's on the brush first, rather than applying it directly to my skin. I have this product, Essence sent this to me in the mail as PR just in a package with a couple of random things. It's the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. So I'm not completely sure how I'll be using this. Oh, blend a few drops in your foundation or moisturizer for a naturally warm look or wear alone for a soft sun-kissed radiance. That would actually be really pretty to blend this in with the Tower 28 Tinted Moisturizer. I think that would look really gorgeous, a little bit more summertime appropriate. I feel like this color has matched me really well during the winter, but I think late spring, early summer, it will be a little bit too light. So I think these two combined would be really nice. So I'll definitely have to try this out. Some of you guys have recommended this to me. So if you have this and you like to use it, let me know. Do you use it as a liquid bronzer? Do you use it as a mix-in? 
I'm just curious to try it out because I don't have anything like it. I have this little trio from Kaja. This is their Play Bento Blush and Bronzer Trio in Butter Up. I love Kaja. I think their products are so cute. I haven't tried this yet. So it comes with a powder bronzer and then you also get a powder highlighter. This kind of looks like the ColourPop Super Shocks. And then you get a cream bronzer. I like that everything comes in this cute little stack. I love their eyeshadows. So I'm definitely curious to try this out. I have another product from Kaja as well. They sent me a couple of products. This is a lip duo. So this is called their Balmy Bento and I have Strawberry Rose. So on the top you get a little lip balm and then on the bottom you get a lip scrub. I have tried this. It's a little bit more gentle of a lip scrub. So if you don't want anything too abrasive, this is fun. I just think it's cute. It also smells good. So once I try these out a little bit longer, I'll keep you posted. I'm planning on doing a big speed reviews video within like the next week or two. So I don't know if these products will be included in that because I want to test them thoroughly, but if I get the chance to use them, I'll let you know. This is the Buxom Wanderlust Blush in the shade Mykonos. It's a really beautiful color. I love this one for spring. And in the past, I haven't worn it a ton because I have kept my blush pretty subtle, but I don't know what's going on. These days I'm into like a super, not like really intense blush look, but something a little bit more obvious than I've done in the past. I got this not too long ago. It's the Jcap Beauty Lovestruck Blush and Bronzer. So I love the Jcap Beauty eyeshadow, so I've been curious to try out more of their products, and this blush just sounded nice. It's supposed to be like a really glowy blush. Okay, so that top part is like an overspray because I just swatched it and it kind of came off, but it does feel really smooth. It's definitely more of a subtle color. What color do I have? I have the shade Honey Bunches. So that's just one quick swatch. It's pretty light. Again, it is glowy, which is nice. I wish that overspray went all the way down because I think once you work through that top layer, it might not be as glowy. But again, I'll try it out and keep you posted and let you know if it is a good option. The formula feels really smooth, which is what I typically look for in a blush formula. This is the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Blush in the shade Faded Clementine. I love this blush on days where I want a very subtle look because it's not too over the top. It gives your cheeks a nice natural glow. So it's nice to layer on top of blushes that are a little bit less glowy, but I also like it on its own when I just don't want to wear a lot of makeup, but I just feel like my skin needs something like a natural glow because this is really beautiful. This is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. I have the shade Sunrise. This is pretty much the only bronzer I've been using with the exception of some cream options. I've used a lot of this because it used to have like a pretty obvious dome to it, but because I've used it so much, it's really flat now. So I'm kind of curious if I'm ever going to hit pan on this. This is a baked product. So it's kind of like the Hourglass products where you can use it every single day and it looks like you've barely made a dent in it. But I've used it so much that I have noticed the shape of it has changed. So if I ever use this up, I will be so impressed with myself, but honestly not that surprised at the same time because I do use it so much, it's my favorite. The last cheek product is from Patrick Ta. This is the blush duo in She So LA. This is so pretty. I just uploaded a video where I was testing new makeup and I tried this on camera and it just looks so gorgeous on the skin. This really is worth the hype. I've heard so many people raving about these, so I finally picked one up. This looks amazing on its own, but then when you layer this cream on top, it just gives your cheeks like this beautiful radiance. I haven't worn the cream on its own yet and I haven't layered the powder over the cream, which is what I would normally do. But when Patrick Ta uses this duo, he does powder then cream. So I tried that technique and it looked amazing. I really loved it. So I'm excited to keep using this. I think that is it for cheek products. So let me do complexion products next. So it looks like I have a lot in here, but I really don't, especially compared to other months. So my go-to primer is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. It has been ever since this launched, I think back in maybe January. It just locks my makeup into place really well. Last month I was using the Jelly Pop Primer just to switch it up, but I think I like the Power Grip just a little bit better. I would say it's slightly more hydrating and a little bit thicker. So I might change my mind during the summer and go back to Jelly Pop, but I feel like I'll probably be able to use this up pretty soon. I just enjoy it. I really notice a difference in the way that my makeup wears when I use this. But I wanted to put this in my drawer as well, the e.l.f. Oil Control Primer Mist. This has been a favorite for a few years. I always break this back out during the spring and summer. I do think this keeps my skin more matte throughout the day, but it's such an interesting texture. It feels like you're applying water to the skin, but I do notice a difference. And then I just have the NYX Plump Right Back Primer. This one is nice when I have a lot of texture because it just makes my skin 
look and feel super smooth. And again, I've used up a good amount of this. I mean, a little bit goes a long way. This is more of an expensive primer, but I use this pretty consistently and I haven't made much of a dent in it. So I would say, you know, if it's something you'll use regularly, it, it's probably worth that higher price tag. As far as foundation goes, I just have this one from Catrice. I typically mix this shade. So this shade is 030 Neutral Sand. I've been mixing it with 04, which is very, very light, but I just used that up completely. So I might have to repurchase that, but I don't know. I feel like later in the spring, I could probably get away with just using this one. I kind of want to mix it with the Tower 28 Sunny Days. I feel like that could be a good combination because this product is so lightweight and the coverage is really sheer, but it does give your skin like this beautiful glow. And the Catrice one tends to be a little more mattifying. So I think these two combined could be nice. I do like this one on its own too. So I have that in my drawer. And then I haven't used this in a while. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. This is my all time favorite foundation. But ever since I tried this Catrice foundation, I haven't used the ColourPop one as regularly. So I wanted to put it back in my drawer and get more use out of it. And then not too long ago, I repurchased the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie. I have the shade LG3. So I figured I would put this one in my drawer as well. I don't know. I keep going back to the Catrice one. Like ever since it launched, I don't know, a year ago, it really has been my favorite. But these two were my favorite before that. So I need to use them again and remember why I enjoyed using them because I'm sure I will love them again once I break them back out. I have two concealers in here right now. I need to kind of rotate through my concealers because there are a few in my drawer that I haven't used in a while. So I want to put them in my drawer. I might just randomly reach for them over the next month and see if I still enjoy them. But this is my current favorite, the KVD Good Apple. It has a really long name. Lightweight hydrating concealer or something like that. I have the shade Light 119. I love this because it's so lightweight. It feels like a serum on the skin. It blends out in seconds, but the coverage is so intense. So a little bit goes such a long way and it stays in place really, really well. On days when I don't want a super intense full coverage concealer, I use the LYS Beauty Concealer. This one is definitely more of like a light to medium coverage concealer. So it looks more natural on the skin. So that is it in terms of complexion products. I mean, I have a few powders over here. So my favorite powder is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. I wear the shade Light 4. I kind of go back and forth between four and six. Four is the lighter shade that I tend to reach for or I've been using over the last month or two. But I think again, later in the spring, I'll probably switch to six. This is just so good. It's so smoothing on the skin. It keeps my skin matte and it does have a little bit of coverage. So I feel like it just kind of perfects my skin no matter what base products I'm wearing. I do like this one as well. This one's a little more mattifying, so I feel like this might be more ideal during the summer. It's the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and I have the shade Light. So I just have them both in my drawer. I really could use them interchangeably. I just feel like the ColourPop one is slightly more smoothing, and the NYX one is a little bit darker, so I do tend to reach for the ColourPop one right now. I also have the LYS Beauty Triple Fix Setting Powder. I typically use this to set my under eyes, although I do use the NYX and the ColourPop under my eyes as well, but on days where I want more of a light natural powder, I'll use this one because it really is a super lightweight powder. It doesn't look like you're adding anything extra to the skin. Also, I've had this forever and I've used it very consistently and I still haven't hit pan on it, even though it only comes with 0.23 ounces. I've gone through a bunch of these powders from NYX. This one comes with 0.21 ounces. And then I've gone through a lot of these ColourPop ones as well. This is my third one and it hasn't even been around that long. I think this one comes with a similar amount. So I like the LYS Beauty Powder because it really is that lightweight where you just don't have to use a lot of product. It's so finely milled. It looks really natural on the skin. So I picked up this Rare Beauty Powder maybe a month or two ago. This is their setting powder and I have the shade Light. I don't use this one super often because I'm kind of in a pressed powder mood these days. But this one is a good finishing powder. If I just want to powder my T-zone and I'm wearing like a lot of cream products, I'll just use this to lightly dust over the rest of my skin. I already showed you this Kaja Duo. So over here, I just have like my daily lip products. As I'm getting ready, I'll usually apply one of these. So the first one is the Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm. I actually want to apply this right now. I love this formula so much. It smells like marshmallows. It is so cushiony, so luxurious on the lips. I could honestly wear this all day long. It doesn't have any color, which is why I do end up reaching for other lip products, but they do have 
other scents. They're just not super tinted. So I just like the original one. I think it works so well to prep your lips. So I always apply that before I do my makeup. I'll also use this product. It's from Jack Black. It's their Intense Therapy Lip Balm and I just have the Shea Butter Vitamin E one. This one has SPF. So I always use this one if I'm going out, like if I'm leaving the house. And then I also love this one from Beauty Pie. It's their Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil Plus. This looks so good on the lips. So this is one that I'll actually wear out as well because even though it is like a clear lip balm, it looks so pretty. It makes your lips look really smooth, super shiny, and it's so comfortable. It feels like a lip treatment, but it also looks a little bit prettier than a lip treatment. So I just keep those right there. So over here I have all of my eyeshadows. So I have my ColourPop Super Shock shadows, which I'll go through in a second, but let me show you the eyeshadow palettes that I'll be using this month. So like I said, I'm kind of feeling like very warm toned eyeshadows, corals, pinks, peaches. So I just chose three of these ColourPop nine pans. This one is the Coast to Coral palette and it comes with really beautiful shades. I haven't gotten a ton of use out of this one lately, but again, I'm really feeling warm toned eyeshadow lately, so I feel like this could be a good option. They did just launch this one, the Apricot Me Not, and some people were saying it's kind of similar to Coast to Coral. Coast to Coral definitely has more intense, vibrant shadows, whereas this one's a little bit softer on the eyes. So if you do like more of a natural look, I think you might prefer this one. It does come with a darker brown, which I use pretty much every time I do use the palette because it is a little bit softer on the eyes. But one of my favorites is this one, Baby Got Peach. It's been around for a long time. I just think it is so gorgeous on the eyes. It really is like one of my ideal spring summertime palettes. So I'll definitely be using those three quite a bit. And then I have these two color pop quads. I miss using these. I haven't used them for a little while. And these two were like my absolute favorites last summer. Or was it the summer before? Whenever these launched, I could not stop using them. So I'm excited to have them back in my everyday makeup drawer. This one is Cream Soda. So I like these because they just come with four shadows. You can get a complete eye look in just a few minutes. These shimmers are so pretty on the eyes and these mattes are incredibly soft. They blend out in seconds. And then Citrus Fizz is one of my favorites too, which is just a staple warm toned eyeshadow quad. I also put this little palette in my drawer. This is the Essence Nothing Compares to Nude. It's just a very simple six pan palette. This has a mix of warm tones and cool tones. It's not quite as orangey or corally as the palettes I just showed you. So this is more ideal if I want like a slightly toned down neutral look. And then I also have this one. This one is from Folklore. It's the Prague palette. This one just has such gorgeous shadows. I think I got this last summer and I loved using it because first of all, the metallics are so intense. That's one of my favorites. But again, the matte shadows are really blendable and smooth as well. I, got, I think I got it like summer going into fall and it was the perfect transition palette. So I'm excited to use it even more this summer. I forgot, I also have these ColourPop palettes. These are really cute. So. When I saw these online, I thought they were pretty. I wasn't sure about the packaging because even though I love these quads so much, they tend to break. You can probably tell. I think I repressed that shadow back in the pan. The packaging is just kind of cheap. I think the clear packaging looks pretty, but it's not super practical if you want to throw this in your makeup bag or you're traveling with it. These feel a little bit more substantial, but I think they're pretty much the same. So I honestly don't know how these would hold up if you were to travel with them. I feel like they could shatter. So I probably won't throw them in a makeup bag. I'm not going out of town anytime soon, but if I was, I, I probably wouldn't bring them for that reason. Anyway, these are a little bit cooler toned. So I did try these out. I wore some of these shades in this one. This one is called Clearly in Love. And then this one is Coast is Clear. I used this one, which is Super Shock, and this one, which is so intense and gorgeous on the eyes. I'm almost done with palettes, so I just have my two Patrick Top palettes. This one is the Major Dimension palette, which launched last year. So this one is like the true warm toned neutral palette, although the other one does have warm tones in it as well. But if you want like more, if you don't want a rosy toned palette, this is going to be the one for you. The new one is the Major Dimension 2 Rose Eyeshadow palette, which also has some warm tones in it. And this one, I think I like better because it does have those rosier shades and I love a good pink eyeshadow palette. Okay, here's what they look like next to each other. So on the top is the first one, on the bottom is the second one. There are some similar tones, but I think overall they are pretty different. If they had launched at the same time or I got into these eyeshadow palettes later, I think I would have purchased the second one and then skipped over the first one. I do like the first one. I've gotten a lot of use out of it, but the shades in the second one 
just call to me a little bit more. Based on the initial promo photos, I did think it was going to be more of a cool toned palette, but the shadows do pull pretty warm toned. And I've heard that I've heard that from a lot of you guys too. So I just put both of them in my everyday makeup drawer for May. I have my KVD Beauty Dazzle Stick. This one is in the shade Hail Surge. This pretty much just lives in my everyday makeup drawer because it's just a lot of fun to use. It is a cream shadow, but it's super intense, really sparkly. So I love to use this on days when I'm kind of not really feeling a full eyeshadow palette because I'll just blend a bronzer in the crease and then apply this. So I also have a bunch of Super Shock shadows. I don't know if these are all available. I have a couple of new shades, a couple of older shades, but I'll show them for you just in case you're curious. And again, if you want to skip this part, just check the description box below for timestamps, but I'll kind of go through this pretty quickly. So actually these three are available. These are new. This one is in the shade Hey Lover. These were part of the Apricot Me Not collection and you can get these three as a trio. So you can't purchase these separately. This one is the shade Bestest. I dropped this one and it did kind of pop out. But the nice part about these is you can kind of easily just push them back in. This one is in the shade For Me. I feel like I drop my makeup a lot because I have these baskets where I set products if I'm planning on filming a video and it has like slots for handles and the products fall out of those handles kind of often. This one is Sequin. This is one of my all time favorites. Actually, Amaze is probably my number one favorite as you can tell by how this one looks. I love this one for quick, easy looks just because it gives your eyes the most perfect glow. These two are part of the Raw Beauty Christie collab so I don't actually think they're available anymore. If they ever launch this again, the Super Shock Shadows are some of the best. That one's Mycelium and then this one is called Campfire. I feel like this will be perfect with a lot of the palettes that I have. This one is Lightning Bug. I've used this one quite a bit. I think I got it during the holiday season. It's so gorgeous. I know not everyone loves the Super Shock shadows, but they're still like my number one ColourPop product. They're so pretty on the eyes. This one is For Real, which again, I haven't tried this one, but it's a really pretty warm pink. And then I just have two more. This one is It's a Vibe. This was part of a recent collection as well, so this one should still be available. And then the last one is a pretty cooler tone shimmer called Ritz. And I love this when I want to do like a cool toned smoky eye. Okay, let me flip this tray around so I can show you the other eye products I have. So for eyeshadow primer, I have this one. It's the Smashbox 24 hour photo finish eyeshadow primer, which is a very smooth primer. If you deal with a lot of texture on your eyes and you just need something to really smooth over your lids, that is the one to try. And then I also have the ColourPop Party Proof Eye Primer, which this just reminds me of the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I feel like I'm getting close to finishing it up, so I just have this in my drawer too. So for brows, I actually took all of my brow gels out, apparently. I don't see any other ones in here because this has been my go-to. The Kosas Air Brow is amazing. I, I don't know, this is like a magic brow gel. It has everything that I need. The brush is the perfect size. The texture is so nice. It combs your brows upwards so you get like that lifted look and it locks them into place. I love this so much. It's cut my brow routine in half because I'll use this product and then I barely have to go in and do any work with a brow pencil. So I have the Kosas Brow Pencil, which I've really been enjoying. And then I also have the Urban Decay Brow Blade in the shade Dark Drapes. I do have a bunch of liquid liners. So I have the Urban Decay Perversion, which is my go-to. It's like the reliable eyeliner I know works well. And then I've been trying these three out. I've had this one in my drawer for a while, the CoverGirl Exhibitionist. This one is nice. It's really dark and dramatic, and it's a very wet liquid liner. So the product flows out very easily, which I feel like when that happens, my eyeliner can get out of hand kind of quickly, but it is a felt tip. So I like that it's more of like a saturated eyeliner for a felt tip. I just think it works well, so I've been using that one. And then at recently, I got this Flower Beauty one, which I like, and then this one from Beauty Pie that I've been testing out. This one is, a, actually, all of these are felt tips except for the Urban Decay one. Normally, I don't like felt tip liners, but all three of these are nice. The Flower Beauty one is a little bit more subtle, so if you don't want a super dramatic wing or you don't want a really intense black eyeliner, you might like the Flower Beauty one. I have these two eyeshadow sticks from It Cosmetics. These are the Superhero No Tug Shadow Sticks. I haven't tried these yet. The reason why I like to try these eyeshadow crayons is because I'm always curious if they work well as eyeliner, in the waterline, on the lid. Oh wow, these are super lightweight. They don't feel heavy at all. I think they're going to be a lot more subtle on the eyes than some other eyeshadow sticks. And then I just have some mascaras. So these are the mascaras that are currently open. And then I have one more thing to show you. 
as far as mascara goes. So I have the Essence Lash Princess Curl and Volume, which is just one of my favorites. If I want really dramatic lashes, I'll reach for this one because it gives me a ton of volume. And I also like using this as a base mascara because these other formulas are really lengthening. So I have the ColourPop uh, Level Up Mascara. I have two. So I have the black one and then also the burgundy one. The black one is my preferred one, but I love this on the lower lashes because it really does a great job at enhancing your lashes. So if you don't have a ton of lashes, this makes it look like you have more than you do. And then another one of my favorites is the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. This one makes your lashes look so long and this one does a better job at separating than the ColourPop one. So those are kind of like three of my staples, but I just got this set. This is from Sephora. It's one of their little sets that comes with like five minis. And then whichever one you love, you can redeem it for a full size mascara. So I'm in the process of testing these out. I tried the Ilia one and then I also tried the Say one. I definitely prefer the Say one overall. I have tried the Milk Makeup one in the past, but I think I might give it another shot. So after I try everything, I'll keep you posted and let you guys know what I think about these. But I've been wanting to try more from these brands in general. I haven't tried, I've tried a couple of products from Ilia, maybe like one. And then I haven't tried, say, Cali Ray or Item Beauty. It takes me so long to get through mascara. So I thought it would be nice to have a few mini options and not necessarily buy like full sized versions of these before I know if I even like them. Okay, here are all of the lip products I'll be focusing on this month. So I have a lot in here, but these are all the ones that I'm currently reaching for pretty much nonstop. I only have one new formula in here and I just keep these in my everyday makeup drawer because I love them all so much. They are my favorites. So on top I have these, these are from Profusion. They are the Juicy Lip Tints. So they have, I think they have four shades and I, no, they have three and I have all three. So I wouldn't say that you really need all three. Sometimes lip oils look different. Like the new Milani lip oils, those do look slightly different on the lips. These all pretty much look the same. So I would say maybe choose your favorite and just try one. I just get mine from the Profusion website. The orange one is probably my favorite just because it is maybe slightly more warm toned, but I love this formula. I also have this lip oil from LA Girl. This one is in Shimmer Coconut. I don't have any of the other scents or colors. This one is a clear. So again, I'm not sure if the other ones look that different on the lips, but if you just want like a very lightweight, clear lip oil, something that's not too oily or overly hydrating, this one's nice. I'll usually just throw this one in my pocket when I'm leaving the house because it's not too intense. It's just very soft, very light. This is the Ulta Beauty Juice Infused Lip Oil. I just got this one recently. This one's in Jojoba and Peach. So I did have another one. They have a couple of different colors. Some look a little bit more tinted on the lips than others, but this one is just like a really pretty clear. And the Ulta Beauty Lip Oil is definitely a little bit thicker and heavier than Profusion or LA Girl. It's more of a nourishing lip oil for sure. So as far as lip gloss goes, I just have my Kaja lip glosses. These have been my favorite. I can't get enough of them. They're so glossy, so beautiful. They're not sticky, but they're a little bit thicker than other lip gloss formulas. So I just find that they actually stay in place pretty well. They just look really glossy and smooth. So over here I have my Tower 28 Milky, what are they called? Tower 28 Shine On Milky Lip Jellies. So I love these. I've really been enjoying, sorry, I'm trying not to make too much noise. I've really been enjoying pistachio. I think that this one is a good option for spring. I have this Patrick Ta lip gloss in the shade Superficial. It's like a very light, soft, natural nude. It's not too intense, so on its own, it doesn't give my lips a lot of color, but I do think it looks pretty on top of lipstick. This one, the only reason why it's not more of a go-to is because it does have a cinnamon scent. I'm just not a big cinnamon person. When it comes to my lip products, I prefer like vanilla or, I mean, I guess just vanilla. What other scent do lip products use? Like they use a lot of fruity scents. I don't know, or, or mint. I like mint cinnamon, not my personal favorite, but I do like the formula. This is a newer lip product for me as well. It's the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum in Apricot Glow. This is really pretty. It's like a glossy lipstick, but it has very sheer pigmentation. It's really nice. I've been enjoying this one a lot. This actually smells really good. Okay, so right here I have the ColourPop Glowing Lips, which are so pretty. I like these because they're like, they're glossy lipsticks, but they're different than like the Makeup by Mario formula or the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips because they have a little bit more pigment. They're really soft, very creamy, but again, they give you a really pretty glossy sheen. Under those, I have the e.l.f. Sheer Slick Lipsticks, which I always love this time of the year because 
They're, they're somewhat similar to the ColourPop Glowing Lips, but these are definitely more sheer. You can get a pretty like juicy pop of color, but they're not creamy. They definitely have that sheer quality to them. So I just like to keep those in my drawer during this time of year because when I do want like that pretty glossy sheer wash of color, those are nice. I have a lot of lip products in my drawer this month. Okay, so I haven't tried this formula. This is the ColourPop So Glassy Lip Gloss. These came out the same time as those nine pan palettes that I showed you in the clear packaging. So I kept a couple. I kept this shade, which is Epiphany, and it's a light, really light nude. This one is No Joke. It's more of like a cool toned berry. And then this one is called Infinite, and it's a warm gold. Let me just swatch these because I haven't tried these at all. I don't really have a ColourPop lip gloss formula that I love. Like their lip glosses have always been fine, but there are just so many lip glosses out there that I feel like I haven't really found one of theirs that's become an absolute staple of mine. Oh no, the doe foot applicator popped off of this one. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it. I don't even see it in the lip gloss. This is what it's supposed to look like. It has like a triangular doe foot and it just completely popped off inside the gloss. Okay, so these are, a, they're nice. I thought based on what they look like in the tube, they were going to be way too shimmery for me. So this one's Epiphany, this one is no joke. I thought they were going to be glittery, but they're not. They're just pretty glosses. So I'll definitely try out the formula and see what they look like on the lips. I think they're supposed to give you like that true glass-like finish. So these are definitely two of the more subtle shades. There were some more bold, intense shades and some that had a lot more sparkles. So it might depend on which one you pick up. I'm sad about this one. Maybe I can, I don't know how I'll even get the applicator out. I don't know. I feel like this would have been a pretty color though. I don't think I can fit tweezers in there. Oh, you can see it right there. <laughs> and then I just have the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips, which I love. They're so beautiful. They're very similar to the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. And then the last product in here is from NYX. It's just the This Is Juice Gloss in the shade Pomegranate Cloud. Okay, so that's everything inside my everyday makeup drawer for May and June. It's a lot of products, but I feel like I have a good mix of older favorites and then a couple of new things I'll be testing out. So stay tuned. I'm sure I will do some get ready with me's. I want to do a full face of nothing new, and I also want to do a full face of drugstore makeup soon. So those should be up in the next few weeks, but I'll see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye.